Doc Jenny. Join us in the Green Hornet as we travel the back roads of beautiful North Idaho. Every day is different, challenging, and never boring as we see all the farm animals, big and small. If you don't have an octagon, you can either put a couple cones out or you can put a couple of logs on the ground. Anything to create kind of a physical barrier for the horse to have a reason to bend. That's the most important part for, of the octagon. So we're just gonna start, I'm gonna send Ernie out around the octagon and I'm gonna ask him to shape into the shape around the octagon. I'm using the little longer lead rope and then I've got something that I can uh, drive his hindquarters with, in this case, just a little bit of a, a carriage whip. You can also use a flag or a dressage whip. A lunge whip is probably a little long for this exercise. So I'm gonna send Ernie out around the octagon. So I'm gonna ask for him to walk forward around the octagon without stepping into it. If he tries to step on the octagon, I'll just drive him away with my whip or my body language. I'm gonna ask for him to get a little bit more bend through his head and neck by making contact with the lead rope lightly, asking him to hold that bend through his head and neck. And I've got my dressage whip here to drive that shoulder away in case he starts to come into the octagon. For a lot of horses, when you first make contact on the head, the body will follow. We correct this when we're in the saddle by using our inside leg. And now we're just going to use that whip in place of our inside leg along with a light contact on the rein to ask the horse to hold that bend. So right now I would like for him to be tracking pretty straight. So his inside hind leg is stepping in the same track as his inside front leg. When I lose bend, I just ask for a little bit of contact and make sure that he is holding that bend all the way around the octagon. Now we have a couple different ways to switch directions. I can ask him to stop, ooh, and then just switch directions on the outside of the octagon, just like you would if you're normally leading the horse around in a circle. I'm gonna ask for him to go forward again. His bend's a little bit better this direction. We're gonna create that bend. He's holding it really well himself, continuing to drive that hindquarters forward. I want a nice, good walk. I don't want him being doggy. I'm going to follow his forward motion and step out of the octagon myself towards his hindquarters so that I'm out, he continues walking, and he goes through the octagon. I'm just going to step backwards and continue driving him forward so that now he's walking around the octagon again. So I'll do that again. As he goes by me, I'm gonna follow his hindquarters out, push him forward, and ask him to walk through the octagon. So the octagon is a really useful tool for giving the horse some focus in your groundwork. It takes just a little bit of practice, as Kari can tell you guys, because she just went through this with Aton. It takes a little bit of practice getting into and out of the octagon. So Eight always taught us to follow the horse's hindquarters out. And I think when Kari was there, he had a little bit different instruction for her, but that's what I find the most useful, is if you just keep your forward momentum and follow the hindquarters out. You'll notice when I do that, it does disengage his hindquarters a little bit. So you have to be ready to continue with that forward motion. Otherwise they kind of disengage and do a mini turn on the forehand. But if you can get your timing right and keep those hindquarters moving, you can keep them moving around the octagon. We're gonna drive the hindquarters away and create a shoulder in on the circle. So I'm gonna ask for the horse to look towards me just a little bit more, a little bit bend through the front of the body and push those hindquarters away with my whip. There we go. Thank you, Ernie. Then I'm gonna let him go forward again. I'm gonna step through the octagon as he steps in. Then 
I'm gonna change directions. Good job, buddy. Now I'm gonna push the hindquarters away on this side. So this is, takes a balance of draw on the forequarters and push on the hindquarters. I'd like a little more forward than that. I don't want him stepping quite so that he's crossing over. Right there is pretty good. I'd like for his inside front leg to be landing near the same track as his outside front. Inside hind landing near the same track as his outside front. All right, the other thing we can do with the octagon is I can ask Ernie, and this is one that we work on a lot when we start, start working towards Liberty. So I can also ask him to stay on a small circle to the inside of the octagon. This is the same exercise that we will do on the ground. This is an exercise that they need to do when we do um, challenge walk, walk one. They need to create a circle inside the octagon and then do a turn on the haunches and go the other direction. So I'd like for him to be bending and filling that octagon without stepping out. There we go. There we go. Good job. Now I'm going to step forward this way. He does a turn on the haunches. Oh, and then he's straight in the circle. I'm going to let him think about that a little bit because he had to struggle. So that was a lot for him to go through in one, in one foul swoop without stopping and giving him this break. So um, for demonstration purposes and when we're doing a video, we'll sometimes push our horses a little bit harder than we would if we were working on things on the ground or um, trying to get certain lessons done. For some horses, this would have been way too much to work on all at once. So you definitely have to feel your way along. If you find that you and your horse, like Ernie and I just had here, where we were getting a little bit discombobulated, things weren't working, you don't have to wait for the moment to be just right before you stop and regroup. If you feel like at any time in either your groundwork or your riding, that things are not going well. Um, sometimes it's best to just stop, both of you breathe for a minute and then pick it up again. There seems to be a, a, a feeling that you can't stop what you're doing if, it's, if the horse isn't giving you the right answer because it's rewarding the wrong thing. And there are definitely times where that is true. What you have to try and differentiate between is, is your horse confused? Is your horse trying and trying to give you something but they keep giving you the wrong thing? If that's the case, then you need to give them a second to relax, think about it, instead of just having them pull out answer after answer because they're trying so hard. So they, they need to be rewarded for the try, even if it, their, their try is not necessarily addressing the right thing. There are also times where if you're asking and asking and your horse isn't giving you the right thing, that you need to keep asking until you find a step towards the right direction. That's a feel thing, and it's a really hard thing for us to say when it's a plus B, you do C, and when it's E plus D, you do F. So it takes some time to figure that out. But you can always try stuff. And again, if things aren't going well and you feel like you're really struggling, it's a good time to kind of stop, let the horse regroup, and then you can ask again. So now that Ernie's had a chance to regroup, I'm going to try and send him around on that circle on the inside one more time and see if he's maybe a little bit better about this. The right side is definitely his hard side for bend, both on the ground and in the saddle. So I'm just gonna see if I can send him around on this circle on the inside of the octagon and see how he feels about it now that we had a chance to stop and rest. I'm gonna push him out just a little bit, try and keep that forward energy going. And now I'm gonna ask him for a turn on the haunches right here. Ooh, good job, little buddy. That was much better that time. So that was a perfect example of we had done too much he needed some time for a reward to get relaxed and to not have to do anything for a second so that he could regroup and then he could think about what he was doing. So just to review the octagon exercise, it's basically in um, the same exercise as we do in natural horsemanship that is the send by or I um, can't think right now what the other words are for that. Sending by, tracking up. There's lots of other words for it. It's basically asking the horse to walk with good energy around you in what is essentially a working walk, creating bend with um, good bend from head to tail and all four feet tracking up. We do that both around the octagon, within the octagon, and through the octagon. 
changing directions both ways. So I guess so that's all we've got to show you on that particular exercise. Uh, hopefully you guys will be able to ask us some questions if you're having some trouble with it. And like I said, hopefully we'll be able to work with you one-on-one -on -one with that. Hey everybody, thanks for riding with us in the Green Hornet today. This is Doc Jenny signing out. If you like what you saw, be sure and follow us in the Green Hornet with Tormund out on the road with Doc Jenny. Just click the link below <laughs> and follow us along on our journeys. See you later.